What's up guys? I'm Elijah. Welcome to the Courageous Church. And I'm Amber. We want to share a couple things that are happening around here. Today is one of our favorite days of the month. It's Baptism Sunday. Baptism is important because it's a public declaration that we've accepted Jesus and are turning our back on our old life and are now trusting Jesus as we move forward. So if you want to make this life altering decision to get baptized today, we want to celebrate with you. All you need to do is sign up after any worship experience. At South, go to the Orange Room and at North to the Community Room. We have everything you need. One of the exciting things coming up this year is our marriage conference happening February 9th and 10th. This will be designed for you to enjoy time with your spouse, find fresh inspiration for your life together, and connect with a community of couples to walk alongside as you grow your marriage. Whether you're newly engaged or have been married for years, this conference is designed to help you uncover the purpose, passion, and fulfillment God has planned for your marriage. Head to our website for details and the cost. You don't want to miss out on this. We are gearing up for our spring semester small groups. If you're interested in becoming a small group leader or want to lead a small group again, you can sign up today. You can register your group by visiting our website or you can visit the small group leaders info table next Sunday for all of the information. All of our small group leaders get a free t-shirt for registering. We love to celebrate our sweet babies here at TCC. Our baby dedication is happening January 16th at both of our locations. For more info or to register, visit our website. Thanks for being here with us today. We hope you have an awesome weekend. The Courageous Church I See is a citywide, region-impacting church. One church with many uniquely gifted leaders because honestly, the church is not about buildings and stuff and land. The church is, was, and always will be God's people. I see a church powerful and bold that empowers and builds the strengths of the people that call it home. I see a church that sees big things, that expects unexpected God things. I see a courageous church completely committed to Jesus Christ as the head of the church. I see a courageous church with a culture of encouragement. A church that will not be satisfied with anything ordinary. Filled with vision, I see a church that's big enough to dream and to believe for God to touch our region, to touch the Ozarks. But I also see a church that's personal enough to get elbow deep in the issues that people bring to the table and work and love and pray until victory comes. We reach the many by never ever losing sight of the value of one. I see a church that's unbending to the culture. I see a church that loves people that society has deemed unlovable radically. I see a church that is worshiping God with the distinct soulful sound. I see a church broadcasting its message to thousands over the world wide web. I see a church that's constantly innovating and adapting to new technology. Additionally, completely addicted to constant improvement. I see a church that continually pushes ministry into the hands of the younger generation. I see leaders of a courageous church who dare to be themselves that bring flavor to the church yet they live secure in the knowledge that it's not about me. People, leaders in this church, that when they open their mouths, there's something powerful that resonates in you. You know they have been touched and called and anointed by God. I see genuine servant leaders, people without egos, people that are life-giving. I see real folk, authentic people, no perfect people with integrity and pure hearts for God's house that serve hard and really understand that teamwork makes the dream work. I see a church that's unbending and unintimidated, a church that loves big and offers life-giving solutions to a broken world. I see a church that believes at its core the gospel of Jesus Christ is our everything. It's all we live for. I see a church that's committed to bringing the love and hope of Jesus Christ to impossible situations. I see a church whose head is Jesus whose help is the Holy Spirit, and whose focus is the Great Commission. That is the church I see. This is Vision Sunday, and I want to share with you my heart for this house. Vision is not something that's uh, unspiritual. Matter of fact, vision is something that God opens your heart to when you receive the Spirit of God. 
I want to thank all the people who came up here and talked from their heart, about their heart for the house. Give it up for them this morning. And so um, vision and seeing what God sees is an important thing. And so here's what the Bible says. Kyle Nelson, is that you up in the house this morning? Is that you right there? Oh, yes. I'm glad you're here today. Um, we have, that might have not been Kyle, but she, whoever it was sure looked like Kyle. So, you know, <laughs> I'm supposed to be prepared, aren't I? So here's what the Bible says about vision. It says this, Acts 2 and 16. And it's talking about what the Lord would do in the last days, what the Lord would do in the hearts of people, okay? It says this. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Verse 17, in the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit. And so there is a heightened awareness we should have of God doing something he hasn't done before in our lives, pouring out his spirit. And then he says, I'll do it on all people. And so churches should never exclude all people, all right? Your sons and daughters will prophesy. That means speak the mind of God, speak the will of God, speak the hope of God, okay? And then your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. And it goes on to say on your servants and on men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days and they will say what God says, they will prophesy. And so the spirit of God in the church in these days that we're living in is so important and unique in that it causes you to see things differently and say things differently. The power of God in this church causes us to see what God sees and say what God says. And we need that because there's so many forces in the world that would cause us to not believe in the goodness of God and what God wants to do. And so we have a vision. And vision is important because a vision defines boundaries for you to live by. A vision is like a river and no vision is like a swamp. The banks of a river cause the river to move, but with no banks, with no constraints, swamps happen and they become stagnant. And so we have a vision. And so when you have a vision, you don't say what everybody else says. It says you would prophesy, meaning that you speak to a future that's different. You speak to opportunities that are bigger. You speak to hope that is larger. You speak with a perspective rooted in what God sees. And so that is what vision is. And so when we don't have a vision... We follow all kinds of different things, and we enter into temptation easily. The Bible tells us that without a vision, the people perish. There is death that follows when there is no vision. One translation says, without a vision, people cast off restraint. It's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I'll just wander around aimlessly. That is not what this house is about, and that's not what our heart is about. And so we have to have a vision even for the small things, a vision for your career, a vision for your family, a vision for your marriage. For example, I've always had a vision for my marriage. It was found in Genesis where it says a man would leave his father and mother in Genesis 2 and 24. It says that a man would leave his father and mother and would cleave to his wife. What does that mean? It means that I put Renee and that family first. I would never... I would never uh, go to lunch with a woman who wasn't my wife by myself, ever. Why? Because I have a vision of leaving and cleaving. And when I think about the totality of Scripture, I realize that um, Renee doesn't have that as a vision as well. And the Lord forgave Moses of murder and forgave David of murder. And so he might one day forgive Renee of murder <laughs> if I didn't have the right vision. And so the vision constrains me. Vision constrains me and vision constrains you. We're not trying to be anything more than what God has called us to be. We're not trying to outdo somebody else in the city. We're just trying to help reach our city, okay? And so vision gives us purpose and vision gives us a reason to work. If you don't have vision, you don't know why are we here? What are we doing? What are we trying to do? We exist to reach people with a life-giving message of Jesus and lead them to know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. We want people to start taking steps toward God. We don't throw people into the deep end and watch them drown and say, well, they must not have been, they didn't get it. <laughs> no, we lead people steps along the way. And so um, you got to have a vision for your life in 2018. You have to have vision that is rooted in what God says, not what you say, okay? And so I've got some vision things that we're going to declare out loud right now over our lives before I talk about the church as a whole. Are you ready? Are you awake? Number one, here is what you need to declare to speak what God is saying over your life. Number one, do it with me. It should be on the screen. Ready? No dream is too big. 
to ask God to do. I will ask. Do not allow your mindset or heart to be satisfied with lesser things and manageable things and things that are just enough. We serve an abundant God. Pray prayers that are big. God is not insulted by the bigness of your prayers. In 2018, don't worry about it. Don't consider it. Just say, God, here's what I think you could do. I'm asking you to do that and more. Somebody say yes. Yes. We got to believe this. And that's, what, that, that's when your heart is touched by the Spirit of God. You, you believe bigger, okay? Number two, the battle, read it with me, the battle is the Lord's and I am not alone. The first thing the enemy likes to do is convince you nobody cares about you, nobody is with you, nobody is on your side, not even God. That is a lie. You are not alone. There is help and hope that comes from Jesus and the people Jesus has placed in your life. Number three, man, I saw a picture of Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon this week, sitting at a ratty little desk in the corner of a warehouse in spray painted in blue uh, spray paint, rattle can spray paint. You know what I'm talking about. The kind of you buy O'Reilly's to dress up your car with. <laughs> uh, it said Amazon.com in blue spray paint on the wall. Don't be ashamed of small beginnings. Number three, I will not give up on what looks small right now. I'm not afraid to start small. I'm not afraid to dream big. I'm not afraid to believe that little is much when God is... Little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. Little is much when God is in it. If you have a heart that's been changed by God, it doesn't look good now. The marriage doesn't look good now. The difficulty seems big now, and my ability seems small now, but I will not give up on what looks small. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. Number four, read it with me. I will not, sorry, my bad. (laughs) Start over. I will resist stopping short of the miracles I need. We don't serve a God. You ever seen CeeLo Green? Does that make me crazy? Come on, CeeLo Green. All right? CeeLo Green's got little arms. You ever notice that? He can barely get the mic under his mouth. I love the guy. The guy can sing, but he's got little arms, right? That's not God. God's not like, ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can get to you and help you. We serve a God with long arms and big arms. Don't stop short. If CeeLo shows up, we're going to let him sing because I've been so hard on him. (laughs) Number five, I will not give up ground as I take new ground. You might have had a good season in the past, and you thought, well, God was certainly helpful to me, and he gave me a big break, and so that's all God's ever going to give me. No, if God helped you in the past, he can help you in the future. And so I'm not giving up because the word of God tells us the promise of Joshua, that is the promise over this church, everywhere your foot treads, I will give that to you. I'm not giving up new ground when I step toward what God has for me. Everything I step on is mine. Number six. I believe, read it with me, I believe no traps set for me will be successful. God is on my right, God is on my left. The Old Testament says he is my shield, my buckler, and my defense. I do not have to worry about what the enemy does. I'm trusting in God to give me victory in 2018. The next one is this. Number seven, I will not give up on the prayers I have prayed. Every prayer that you gave up in your heart on, like I asked, God didn't do it, now I've moved on. I've trusted that he's not going to do it. No, you go back to those prayers and pray them again. Pray it again. God God answers prayers for me and has answered prayers for me that I forgot about a long time ago, but God never forgets. Keep believing. Maintain a position of faith. Like, I trust you, God, to do this. I don't know if you will, but I'm going to keep praying, keep asking, keep believing. You don't have to scream when you say it, but it feels better when you do. (laughs) Number eight, there will be no holes in my financial bags. 
The Bible talks about a, a, a condition in somebody's life where you make money and you don't keep any money and you, you receive blessing but it all goes away. That is not the inheritance of this house. This is a place where God is raising up entrepreneurs. God is raising up investors. God is raising up people that take the next step, the next level. The blessings of God are following those that trust in him. You are not under a curse. You are under God's blessing when it comes to your finances and the life of provision that comes from God. Boom! I felt a little resistance when I said that in the heavenlies. And I know that it's true. I know that it's true. God's got something special for those who will trust in him and believe in him. The last one is this. Fear will not bind me, invade me, or limit my future. I am trusting and believing in the goodness of God for 2018. Are you? If you believe that, say yes. yes. And so we as the church stand upon ground that God is giving us, convinced in his goodness, convinced of his power, and trusting in him. And so we have a heart. We have a heart full of vision. We have a heart for what God cares about. And the heart of God, the heart of Jesus Christ on earth, was always for the house of God. It was always for what mattered when it comes to the mission of God. You know, this building's just a building. The mission lies in the people. The building's a tool. It's not that we have a vision for a building. We have a vision for the house of God that's built in your heart. And so this is what the Lord says about his heart for the house. Now I say to you, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the powers of hell shall not conquer it. The vision of Jesus Christ was to speak about building his church, building his church. The heart of God is to build the mission. It's to build a place where people can find help. It's to build the kingdom of God in people's hearts. That is what Jesus was concerned with, and he will not allow the enemy to stop that. Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it, okay? And so Jesus loves the church. Jesus cares about the church. He said, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Jesus died for the church. He died for the church. I, I'm dying so that there will be a church, a group of people that will carry the name of Jesus. His heart is for the building of the house. And when things go south, uh, 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 what would Jesus do? Moment for, I know that's gone away, but you know, you see the, the, the tennis bracelets every once in a while say, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I mean, Jesus, when things weren't going right, he made a whip and started beating people, driving them out of the temple because he cared that God's house was pure. And so that's always an option. <laughs> it's always an option. And so we care about having a faith position. We care about having a vision from God. We care about having a vision that lines up with what Jesus modeled for us on earth. Somebody say yes to that. Okay, and so God's vision is for the house, and we make no bones about that. God's vision is for the house that's being built in the hearts of people. And so God's done amazing things in 2018. For the first year ever, we averaged, I mean an average Sunday, we averaged over 1,000 people in attendance every day in 2017. First time we've ever averaged over 1,000. Give it up for that. <clears throat> this year we graduated 231 people from Growth Track. 231 people graduated from Growth Track. And of the people that start, 79% of the people went all the way through. Walking toward purpose, walking toward getting connected. One of the amazing things that we did this year is we hosted our first ever team night where we brought both locations together and celebrated those that are making a difference. This year we have expanded our digital reach, which is very important. We now have 4,000 plus Facebook likes. That means we have a system of delivery on social media and we're the third most liked church in the city on Facebook to the glory of God. That means when we got something to say, we have a big distribution uh, network to put it out and so that's something that we value we doubled everything this year we pulled off two christmases two easters two christmas eves and this year at easter we had 1760 in our easter services we did things that opened the doors for people to receive healing we hosted our largest freedom retreat ever for those that went through our freedom small groups we had our largest serve day ever going into our community and what i love about our serve day is many of the projects were birthed in the heart of you guys there were things that you guys saw that you wanted to do and we're like yes go ahead this is good we are empowering you to be difference makers largest one ever we took our team of missionaries to the dominican republic 
And we saw 1,600 patients in our clinics. We performed 20 surgeries. We gave away 1,800 pairs of your shoes. We gave away 300 backpacks to students to go back to school. We donated $100,000 worth of medical supplies. And 200 people gave their lives to Jesus in the Dominican Republic this year. That's an amazing thing. This year in our season of giving, we provided, we provided hope and help for five foster families, 27 single moms, 200 Christmases to kids and teens at Lakeland Behavioral Health and in the Greene County foster care system. We threw a Christmas party for 150 residents of Ark of the Ozarks. And this year we grew in doing all of that by 14% in attendance to the glory of God. To the glory of God. We had 650 people that gave their life to Jesus Christ this year while launching a brand new church on the south side that is one year old today. We baptized in 2000. Yeah, give it up for that. We baptized 88 people and we have 538 active people serving on the dream team. It was a year of great expansion. We went from having 22,500 square feet to 47,300 square feet. We went from owning four acres on a major highway to owning 17 and a half acres on two major highways in our city. God has done things for us that we could never orchestrate for ourselves. We now have two healthy churches that gave $18,500 to Hurricane Harvey Relief, and we sent a truck and trailer full of goods to help with the cleanup there. In this church right now, 61% of the people that are eligible for small groups are in a small group. I want to get that to 100, but I'm pretty stoked about 61%. This year at Christmas, we had 1,227 people come. This year, we had a big goal. It was just to do two churches well. <laughs> It was to do two churches well. We didn't want to stumble with this. We're going to nail multi-site. And now, folks, we have what every multi-site church wants, which is campus equality. You're not going to get a better experience down there than what you're going to get up here. It's an amazing thing that we have two strong and healthy churches helping to reach our community for Jesus Christ. It blows my mind sometimes. I come here, it's full. I go there, it's full. Not so much today. But a lot of times, I come here, it's full. I go there, it's full for the glory glory of God, people giving their life to Jesus, all a part of one church that feels the same. Can God do it? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And so now we have the capacity with three services, both locations, 9, 10, 30, and noon. And it's our goal to get back to that in the fall of 2018. If God would open the door, we'll bring in all the chairs. The balcony will have people in it. We'll put in all the chairs at South. We'll do, we're will do. we not going to do it as a growth measure, but it is our hope. And that is our, our, our vision to have three services, both locations, by the fall of this year. We have seen amazing things in the life of this church. And I sit back with Renee and like, just, it happened. God's doing it and he's doing more. And what used to take us years to get done now happens in months. And eventually what used to take months will take weeks. And eventually what used to take weeks will take days. And what used to take days, may, <laughs> let's just carry on this down. Instantaneous miracles <laughs> is where we're going, people. God's been good to us. And so we have a heart and I love what every person up here said. We have a heart that wants people to come to God and not walk away from his church feeling like they're not good enough. And in so many environments, I walk in and I interact with people, and we're not better than anybody. We're just doing what God's called us to do. But many times, even now, I'm a pastor, okay? And I walk into religious environments, and I walk away feeling like I'm not good enough because they think I'm not. Oh, shut your mouth. I don't want anybody ever coming to God here and walking away feeling like, well, I'm not good enough. You're good enough. You're a child of God, and he's working on you. And if I can do what I'm doing, being the mess that I am, he can do what he needs to do in your life no matter what you're up against. That is how it is. So we have a heart that's built on Jesus and faith, not on religion and conformity. And so I'm going to share with you my vision and my heart. But before I do that, I want to put one thing out there. Um, when, I, when I got Renee to finally marry me after pursuing her for four years and her breaking up with me a bunch of times, and when I finally got her to say yes, like I didn't go to her and say, baby, if you'll marry me, I'm going to buy you a Ford Windstar minivan, <laughs> a 2002 model. You're going to drive that thing for, you know, 12 years. 
It's going to be great. I'm going to buy you a 2,600 square foot gray brick house with a circle drive with a garden tub in the bathroom. Ah, yeah. We're going to have two kids, two boys, 15 months apart because I'm a man. I didn't go to her saying all the stuff I was going to get her, all the stuff I was going to give her. I didn't go to her saying, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, what have I given? I don't even know. I didn't go to her with material things as the motivation for her to love me. I tried to convey to her my heart. And in matters of vision like this, I'm not trying to convince you to follow us based upon the stuff we're going to do because God has the potential to completely change that. Really, like God can change all that. That's not essential, Okay. What's essential is the heart we do it with because God can change everything in a moment, all right? And so here's my vision. Like, I believe that God has called us to be a citywide church. I don't want to join the arms race. I don't want to build eight to $10 million buildings. I've told you before about the Hong Kong Inn here on Kearney Street. It's a powerful testimony. That used to be a Popeye's. And somehow, some way, through the most gross mismanagement on the face of the earth and the greatest incompetence that has ever been seen in all manners of business, the Popeyes didn't make it on the north side of Springfield. <laughs> and so the Popeyes went under. And then somebody came along and said, you know what that Popeyes would be good? It'd be good if that Popeyes was a daycare. And so they turned the, I'm not lying, they turned the Popeyes into a daycare. Strangely, the daycare went under. And so then Hong Kong Inn came in with their cashew chicken. <laughs> oh, yes, they did. <laughs> with their sweet and sour special. Mm. I wish I had a church in here that could get down with some cashew chicken. <laughs> and they brought that thing back to life, and they bought it for a lot less than what everybody else bought it for. And it is thriving today. And if you don't believe it, go order some sweet and sour cashew chicken specials, and you will know that it's birthed by God. We're, we're not the McDonald's of Springfield. We're not going to go bulldoze down stuff. If we're going to be like Hong Kong in. We're going to be opportunists. We're going to buy things and expand. I want a citywide church. I can envision five churches in this community to help reach Springfield. Why? Because Springfield is the well that feeds this region. Springfield is the well that feeds this region. If you think about Jesus in John 4 at the well, a woman came to him who was bound by sin and who was bound by religion. She had five husbands that the one she was living with wasn't her own. And then when Jesus started talking to her, she's like, yeah, but what about I worship this way on this mountain? And then some people worship this way on this mountain. He's like, shut up, woman. He didn't say that, but if it was me, I probably would have said something is, what is wrong with me? <laughs> he said, the water that you have that you need, I'll give you and you'll never thirst again. He pushed through the religion problem she had and the sin problem she had. And God is going to use this church as a well, a well to feed not just our city but our region. But we can't feed our region if we don't have a deep well in our city. And so if you think about Springfield, it's getting better and better. Have you been to Wonders of Wildlife lately? I'm walking around saying, I live in Springfield in God's favor. <laughs> oh, God's favor is on this city. Like, I can't believe we have that. That's so cool. Well, like God is using this city to bless our region. And something about Springfield. Springfield has no influence on Los Angeles. Springfield has no influence on New York City. Springfield has no influence on Houston. But Springfield has major influence on the Ozarks. And I wonder if anybody's praying this prayer, God, give me the Ozarks for your glory. I'm praying that prayer. Let me tell you about a man who pastors in southeast Oklahoma. And it's kind of the armpit of Oklahoma, if you can believe there's such a thing. It's nothing there. There's nothing there. One of the largest cities is 17,000 people. It's very rural. There's this guy that pastors down there who I've come to admire. He has a gray mullet perm. He has 14 locations and has reached 7,000 people for the glory of God in South 
East Oklahoma. I believe that God has called us to be a church that's not just citywide but region-wide, to serve underserved communities in the Ozarks region. Can I make that happen? No, but I'm submitted to God, and if he will lead us and supply us along the way and give us the life, we're not just going to be a citywide church for the glory of God. We're going to be a region-wide church so that thousands of people life can be different based upon the goodness of God working in their heart. Do I control that? No, but I'm submitted to God and believe that all things are possible as we trust him. And so some of the things that we need to do in our heart for the house to get where God wants us to go. At the north side, we had a wedding this year, and because of the condition of our parking lot, the gravel that's so amazingly sprayed out there, uh, the, the church flooded an hour before the wedding. I was freaking out. I try not to freak out publicly but I was freaking out on the inside. I walked into a dark room and said, God, never again are we going to deal with this. This parking lot needs to get done. And so it's at the city. The plans are at the city right now. We're going to fix our parking lot in 2018 and get that done. We, we need help in live streaming our services out of this building. We need to get internet lines here. We've got we need to pray over that. They, they told us it's going to be lots of money to get an easement to go under I-44 to get us fiber lines for live streaming and for enhancing our digital reach. But I believe God's going to work that out. And so we need to pray over that and get it done. We are going to be updating our stage and updating our screens. We, if you all haven't noticed, and I hate to, I'm thankful for what we have, but the screen behind me is set up to be like the old TV used to have. The square TV, notice how everything's widescreen right now? You know, the, you see the gap at the top and the gap at the bottom there? It's because we're still using TV size screens. It's time for us to update this stuff. We have, we have got by and I'm thankful for that and we'll continue to get by. But I'm presenting you a vision gap. We're going to get there eventually, but how you give and how you invest determines how fast we get there. And I would ask you to help us get there. We're going to update this stage. We're launching junior high ministry on Sunday morning for kids. We're flipping our nursery and making it match the south side. We want to be streaming live on Facebook. We need to update our security here. All these things are necessary to get us where we want to go. At south, they also need their video screens updated. We also need to work on getting what needs to be done for live stream up there. We're adding a coffee bar down there so that the coffee bar here and the coffee bar there can come together and we can build maybe five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten homes in the Dominican based upon the money that you give buying coffee that goes directly to missions. We have to do a parking lot at the south side because the neighbors have complained about our illustrious gravel and so that plan is also with the county and we're working toward getting parking lots done there with lights at the south side. We need to open up at Christmas down there. We have our community room here, which takes a lot of strain off at the south side. They don't have that. We need to blow it out, open it up at Christmas this year. It was very, very, very crowded. The, 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 the building down there, uh, it, the, the sides of it are the color of Dollar General, and we make our churches look like Harley Davidson dealerships, and so we need to paint away the Dollar General colors and get the gray there. We're adding junior high ministry at the south side as well. We are... Um, we're working on some of the, the, the technology upgrades there. But, but, but this year, we're, we're doing something we haven't done in the past. In the past, we've sent our kids to a camp that's amazing, but that camp's going to go away. And we send, you know, 40 to 60 kids, I guess, to this camp. Well, we have 300 to 350 kids that come to our church each Sunday. And so we need to localize our kids' camps in the summertime. So we're going to do our own kids' camp. It's going to start small, get bigger, but we're starting that this year. We're also starting a men's conference this year, and we're starting a women's conference this year, and we're adding back our marriage conference this year, giving people the ability to connect to what God is doing in a different way. We need to enhance the way that we fund our kids' ministries and student ministries and start investing a lot more in those areas. They're super, super, super important. We as a church always run lean on our staffing because a lot of churches build up their staffing, get very bloated in staffing, and can't do anything. And so we run purposely lean so that our dream team has the ability to really be empowered to do things that make a big difference. And so we're never going to stop that. But even at a church of our size, we should have 10 to 12 full-time people for the numbers that we have right now. People, we have five full-time people. We're running kind of lean. You see this beard? You see this beard? See the gray in there? I didn't dye it on purpose today so that you would understand <laughs> that we just need to enhance our staffing, not to unempower our dream team, but to fully empower the strength of this church, okay? And so we as the church are taking incremental steps in 2018 to get where we need to go. When will our third campus happen? I don't know, but here's what I do know. It happens when we have more leaders than we are using 
The reason we got that second location is because we were too deep at every leadership level. We get open doors when we have more leaders trained than what we're using and more money than what we have committed. And that is where we need to get. And so it happens through people having a heart for the house, having a vision for the house, maintaining a faith position, and realizing what I do here and what I'm about is spiritual. And so over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be preaching about vision, not just for the church, but for your life for the new year. And we are going to collectively come around the idea of having a heart for the house. And so they're going to pass out these cards. And I want you to get something about our church, okay? I'm not going to ask you to give pledges if you've not trusted God in the tithe. And so if you've never, and if you don't understand the tithe, I'll talk more about it, come back. But it's basically honoring God with the, 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 first, the first part of your increase and giving him 10% of your income. You're like, oh, I can't afford to do that. Trust me, you can't afford not to do that. It's the, it's the opening of all blessings when it comes to your finances and your life. And so I'm challenging you, if you've never tithed in 2018, to try tithing for 90 days. And here's the deal. If you don't see God's blessings in your life, we'll refund you what you give. You hear me? 90 days, tithe. If you don't see God's blessings in your life, we will give you the money back. Come and say, it didn't work for me. We'll write the check, give you your money back. It's a 90-day tithe guarantee. If you've never tried it and the idea is just like shocking to you, try that. It works. And I ain't lying. I'm not afraid. I don't care what you give. If God doesn't bless you and you're like, nope, didn't work, we'll write you your check back and you can have your money back, okay? Now, those of you that, that have just fallen away from committing the tithe to God, I want you to make a commitment this year that I'm going to tithe in 2018. I'm going to honor God in giving. I'm going to trust him in that. And then if you're faithful and you've been blessed by God and you're tithing and honoring God, I'm asking you to make a pledge to help us remove the vision gap. We'll get there eventually, but depending on how you give, it determines how fast we can go. Is that fair? It's not high pressure. I'm not trying to raise a bunch of money for money we've already committed. I'm just saying that we need to have a heart for God's house and trust in him first and trust in him most. And God will give us the grace that we need to reach not just this city, but this region. If I would have stood before our church and said that we're going to have a church of over a thousand every Sunday, and we're going to have uh, we're going to have two locations, they're both going to be amazing right on highways, people would have said he's he's smoking crack, he's lost it, he's he's lactose intolerant, and he's on the vitamin D whole milk, and it's affecting him badly. And so you know, there were people that didn't get to see that, but it's happened. And so I would ask you not to find yourself in that same position today to get up here and hear me speak about something spiritual that God's given to our hearts to convey and sit there and say, well, it probably won't happen. But the devil is a lie. God's been in control and God will be in control. And if I don't please him, he'll move me out of the way and bring somebody in that will follow him. And so I place my hand under it, my heart and my, 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 my head and my everything under God today and say, we have a heart for the house and I'm challenging you to do the same.